I'm uh, happy to be here, and uh, I want to, to thank you for being here. Um, my name is Antoine Certain. I'm working on uh, Airbus Defense and Space, uh, and I'm a software uh, R&T software engineer. Uh, my team uh, working uh, a lot of, on the software execution platform, hardware and software execution platform, with also um, FPGA concern. Uh, applicative FPGA concern. So a quick poll be before we begin. Uh, who here is aware about uh, industry, uh, space industry uh, constraints? So great. <laughs> My first part of the, sh uh, the, the talk will be useful for both of you. Of so space industry context. Um, in the space industry, we have a lot of uh, con constraints, art constraints, regarding uh, environment, environmental constraints, such as the radiation issue, uh, which will, could be a destructive effect on uh, hardware, a transient effect, just a one byte or one bit uh, switch, and also cumulative effect. It's uh, mainly managed thanks to fault-tolerant chips uh, and system with uh, redundancy. But uh, this uh, is quite poor electronic device, low processing power, and uh, costly characterization and qualification. And indeed, we have a lot of trouble to get uh, powerful chips in space. So we are quite late regarding uh, the other industry. We have also energy issue with uh, only solar energy uh, possible. Uh, it becomes rare when far from the sun and unpredictable. Uh, On a planetary surface. We have also uh, mechanical and thermal constraints regarding uh, takeoff uh, when uh, the, the satellite is sending, sending. Uh, Vacuum also is a constraint for us for, the, for electronics. And uh, we have uh, also a lot of uh, variables in operation. Uh, assembly, ground test, launch, and uh, orbital and uh, and uh, orbital, yeah. So we have also technical and industrial contest constraint. Technical about time and synchronization uh, with a specific hardware. Performance for sure. Uh, with we want to be uh, able to have uh, satellites uh, which uh, move very fast. We have also need to to. Um, Data processing a uh, lot of uh, lot of things such as camera and uh, so on. Uh, we have also trouble with the communication. Uh, we are um, the the ground station is not always seen by the satellite, so we have to downlink all the data uh, stored stored in the satellite during a small uh, a small uh, slot of time. So we have to manage st storage with specific hardware because, uh, because of uh, the environment, uh, environmental issue. And we have uh, to ma maintain our, our system for years. Uh, satellite is uh, around uh, 15 to 20 years uh, long. Uh, safety and security, both matters, for sure. Uh, we have also industrial uh, constraints. We are, each satellite is quite different, actually. And it's really hard to promote a complete uh, reuse uh, product uh, policy. We are also looking for European independences because uh, we are a um, lot of concerns about uh, uh, li li US license, such as ITAR. Uh, the complete system is quite difficult to test and uh, very expensive because we need uh, some uh, uh, vacuum chamber and uh, 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 white uh, chamber and so on. 
we are facing uh, such as a lot of uh, people here, I think, a uh, rigorous standard for development. Uh, in the space industry, it's called ECSS for European matter. We're facing also uh, obsolescence. Uh, our components are quite old, as, as I said previously, and um, the manufacturer are not uh, so interested to uh, give us a long way to, to get a uh, uh, component for many years. So it's quite difficult to, to get uh, the component, to ma manage component obsolescence. And for industrial also, safety and security, both matters. Just to focus on um, ECSS criticity level, um, it's more or less the same than in uh, avionics, in the DO 178. Um, when you have a software from category A, uh, if not executed, there's a human uh, life in, in, in risk, and uh, all the system can be failure. In B, it's the same, but without as a human life. C, the system can be uh, uploaded and restarted. And D, it's not so, it's minor impact if the system failed. So um, this uh, kind of category defines the validation and verification effort to do to get through the qualification process. For most satellites, uh, we have uh, boot uh, software in category B and applicator software in category C. It's not true for all satellites, but most of them. Just a quick overview of what is on board on a satellite. We have a processing unit, for sure, data storage, reconfiguration unit to manage redundancies, security unit to manage the downlink with the ground, time unit with a synchronization of all the different electronics, data switch for network and network, and actually, all these uh, different functions are now quite uh, realized with one specific electronics. So we have one electronics for data processing, one electronics for data storage, one for reconfiguration, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, this is a strong concern to to get uh, something more uh, miniaturized because because of the weight for sure, a satellite is uh, very expensive. When you want to send some kilogram in space, it's very expensive. And also for power, it's very interesting to gather every functionality in only one electronics. So just to give you on, on a view of what we are able to do in space industry. So we, um, we have a lot, lot of uh, performance issue, as you can see. Um, we are working on uh, all Leon 4, 3, and 4, which is a Spark uh, V8 um, processors, and quite slowly, which work quite slowly. Uh, the next generation will be uh, ARM R5 uh, quad-core with uh, EFPGA, embedded FPGA. Um, it's important to say that uh, we are working with uh, MPU, um, MPU system and not MMU. It's uh, a strong concern about Linux usage. And um, so we are now here and we want to get better and we want to get a, a stronger, a stronger processor. So just to sum up uh, the space context, um, as I said previously, hardware is quite difficult to manage. We have uh, constraints about environmental constraints, radiation. Uh, it's always very specific. Each mission is different, uh, very expensive and hard to test because of the means we, know we want to, to test it. Uh, software is the only leverage to correct late bugs and discover in the late uh, uh, of the production, and uh, we, we experience some uh, 
power issue uh, about uh, performance. But in the, in the same time, uh, in order to reduce costs, the functionality has to be gathered in one electronic device, as I said previously. We also uh, will see the problematic of integration of black box software, which means that uh, we, we want to, to be able to integrate as a prime, uh, as Airbus Defense in Space can be, uh, integrate some, um, some software we don't know every, anything about just uh, we give them, we give the, um, the provider of the software just uh, uh, um, some um, budget uh, about resources, CPU, and so on. And there are also new requirements about autonomy and reduced downlink. This means globally that uh, space uh, craft are quite not so much autonomous. In, in, indeed, a um, lot of uh, things have been, uh, has to be done on the ground. And because of the, the power, the, the lack of power uh, in, the, in the space, and also because of the difficulties to to manage uh, safety uh, with a complex system. And also to reduce downlink because, as, as I said previously, uh, downlink is really an issue when uh, the satellite is uh, just a line of sight uh, shortly. So safety and security. Um, safety, safety is a long way uh, uh, crucial part of the development. We are used to that. Uh, but until now, security was mainly about uh, downlink, and uh, we have uh, some encryption uh, on the downlink, but uh, we don't think about security inside the satellite, the satellite. But it's changing since the black box integration, as I said previously. We can trust uh, all the software we don't know exactly. So. With this context, why using Linux in the space industry? I think uh, all of you know what is the benefit of uh, using Linux. Uh, for sure, you, you will have a lot of uh, state-of-the-art uh, framework uh, with or without hardware support about AI, software-defined radio, uh, image and video processing. Uh, the Linux ecosystem is also very interesting for us because we don't want to reinvent the wheel, the wheel each time and uh, there is a lot of tools to, to ease the development. Uh, we, uh, something very important, we have the portability with Linux on ARM, Leon, uh, RISC-V, maybe uh, one day. <coughs> and. Uh, Maybe the most important fa fact, from my point of view, is the community. With the community we have around Linux, it's really easy to, to get uh, information about a bug or something. And it's also really interesting to get uh, fresh grade uh, people who want to work in the space industry directly uh, operational on Linux. Because uh, until now we are working on Artems, and I don't know, I don't know if anyone here know a little bit about Artems, but uh, it's quite a niche market. So, which are our issues with uh, Linux usage? Uh, about technical issue, um, we will need real-time usage. Actually. Um, most of the real-time issue we matters in the uh, space industry is about uh, managing uh, I.O., but we will still have some real-time issue. Uh, we don't know exactly which packets to use on which which area, uh, which is uh, safety, which is uh, security, uh, could be uh, also a uh, uh, process of development of uh, this package or this uh, other package. We don't know exactly how we can resolve that. Um, our system has very low memories, low capacity memories. Actually, uh, we are running uh, with um, sometimes few megabytes and, uh, of RAM and a uh, few uh, hundred of megabytes of uh, mass memory. So we are really constrained about memories. And one, one, the last, but not the least, on a technical issue, 
uh, ARM system are MMUless. So uh, we have to, to check if the Linux branch uh, of the MPU uh, MMUless is uh, relevant for our usage. And about industrialization issue, I think it's for all industry, it's quite the same. Qualification, criticity. Um, we have to update our software development environment. We have also uh, some license issue. And we don't know exactly how to manage uh, the constant evolution of the Linux kernel. We are used to, to get, uh, for instance, on Airtense, we are still uh, used as uh, Airtense 4.6, which is uh, uh, 15 years ago, uh, uh, Airtense. So we have a lot of uh, challenge for using uh, Linux in uh, our industry. So just to begin the work on uh, Linux, so we, we just want to, to check if one uh, architecture could answer at least a few questions. Uh, the idea beyond that is to use a, a real-time master application, which is able to reboot, uh, boot, reboot Linux, uh, more monitor the correct execution of the Linux, uh, could be at least tolerant to radiation, and uh, tiny coupled memory used as a working memory. And we just want uh, some message exchange and power management between the two of the, the, the two of the application, and with also Linux slave application which uh, executes the mission. This is a very simple architecture. We want just to explore the mixed criticality based on the heterogeneous multiprocessing device. Uh, we choose to don't uh, take an hypervisor because we are just in this uh, study, we are just interested more in the hardware capabilities than uh, the hypervisor uh, capabilities. So, as I said previously, this solution is quite easy to implement. It's the first step. It matches quite well with reduction, the cost reduction driver. Uh, R5 in lockstep mode could be a uh, transient uh, radiation error, and there are few uh, interactions between R5 and R3 with TCM. Uh, drawbacks, difficulty to manage integration at system level. Uh, it's this uh, kind of architecture that do not ensure that all the Linux software correct BIV and um, it's really a simple uh, real-time application. It, in the real world, it could be uh, much more complex. So what about the target to execute this kind of architecture? Uh, what we need at software level, at hardware level, is real-time cores, cores with uh, deterministic uh, things, dedicated access memory, uh, dedicated to safety critical functionalities. We need applicative cores uh, with uh, rich OS enabled, so M MMU for our concerns, um, fast memory access, and dedicate to mission handling. We need also a SOC management unit, power, timer, uh, debug support, DMA security, and reconfiguration management. We need few memory controllers, nor flash, non flash, and DDR, uh, SRAM for, for most of the time. NOR and NAND, it's quite um, important for space industry because the radiation behavior regarding NOR and NAND is quite different. And uh, NOR flash could be very interesting to get uh, full image software on uh, and uh, uh, with a confidence level on the integrity of the image software. We need also hardware accelerator, uh, GPU, FPGA, mini cores, something like that. Um, it's uh, it's uh, mandatory uh, because we will have in the next uh, few years uh, some uh, uh, new uh, features, new functionalities, and we will need uh, some hardware accelerators. 
and uh, to manage I.O. because we have specific I.O. for sure in the space industry. I don't know if you know about Space Warrior, for instance. Uh, it's uh, something uh, such as um, a serial link, but uh, a little bit powerful. So we have to get some uh, specific hardware uh, and uh, FPGA and to, net to get everything uh, connected, we need a network on chip. So on the market for now, there is uh, mainly the Zinc Ultrascale Plus, which uh, uh, seems to be uh, the quite uh, closest uh, processor we had on the market with FPGA, ARM F53, R5 in lockstep mode. Um, it's an heterogeneous multiprocessing with an MBD, and uh, we have a complete set of value. Just to be a little bit more precise on the Ultrascale Plus, uh, we have a power management unit which uh, allows to switch on, switch off every part of the, uh, the SOC. We have a configuration security unit to be able to get a secure boot. And we have both uh, real-time processing unit, uh, the Cortex R5, in lockstep, in lockstep, which means that uh, the two uh, Cortex uh, execute exactly the same thing. And it's quite interesting for us in the space industry because uh, each time the two uh, don't execute the same thing, the whole system will reboot and it, uh, the first step of uh, radiation tolerant uh, uh, things. And applicative uh, processing unique with the Cortex F A53. So, j just uh, what we have done on that, on this architecture, on this uh, this target, uh, we we changed a little bit the boot sequences provided by the, by the links uh, to be able to to get the RPU. Um, master of the APU. Uh, so the boot sequences of the Zinc Ultrascale Plus is quite complicated with several stages. Uh, power management unit uh, release CSU. CSU loads the uh, first stage bootloader, which is main uh, functionality is to load the bitstream and configure it the, uh, the PS. And the FSBL will load the trust, of, uh, trust firmware in order to secure API. And after all, you boot and Linux. Just um, a little <coughs> focus on the SD card uh, to show you uh, how to manage boot with uh, the Xilinx infrastructure. Uh, we have to use the SDK to generate uh, the boot.bin, uh, which is loaded on the SD card. Uh, this uh, boot.bin will contain the first stage bootloader, U boot, F53, and so on. And after we, uh, we will uh, upload the rest of the Linux partition and also the F53. The so uh, on this architecture, we have to, to manage shared memories. So um, how to manage corruption due, due to radiation, how to manage standard shared memory issue. It's uh, the kind of uh, question we, we ask uh, when we select a memory. Uh, on the Zinc Strascale Plus, we have only two choices. The TCM uh, on the R5, which, working memory, uh, which is the working memory of the R5, in lockstep, and the OCM, uh, which is also used by the trusted firmware. Actually, uh, we had to, to use the OCM because uh, the TCM is a really bad idea to, to use since uh, it's uh, really the working memory of the uh, real-time uh, application. We have to manage also watchdog. So Linux sh shall refresh uh, watchdog uh, regularly. And uh, when uh, it doesn't refresh it, uh, the real-time software will uh, reboot the Cortex F53. To do that, uh, the Cortex uh, F53 will be powered off by the uh, power module uh, unit, 
thanks to uh, interprocessor interruption. It will load the trust firmware and new boot in RAM. And then it will power on Cortex A53 thanks to, again, PMU. So, after doing this uh, first um, step on mixed criticality on heterogeneous de device, uh, what we will do now, so first of all, it's just a first step and it's not a solution. Uh, it's just for us to understand better how this kind of device, heterogeneous device, can be used in space industry. So, um, from my point of view, memory is one of the weakness of this solution of this target because we, we have uh, access to every memory in the system. Uh, the A53 can access to every memory in the system. So it's quite uh, difficult to, to be sure that uh, the memory will not be corrected uh, because of radiation. So we'll work uh, on these uh, topics much more now because we just start a PhD in collaboration with Onera to study uh, these problematics. We, we hope, uh, we watch out ELISA project, and we hope we could contribute to it. And, but um, one thing about industrial um, constraint is that we are running out of, out of time because uh, the increase of functional requirement uh, go faster than us, than R&T, and uh, the reduced cost also. So we have to go fast on the Linux usage in the space industry. And uh, we have to change also the mindset uh, regarding collaboration and license. So that's all for me. Do you have any question? Uh, one, two. Yep. Okay, first of all, thanks for the presentation. And as for the question, uh, what is the thing with memory management unit? I mean, why are you skipping Sorry? it? What is the thing with memory management unit? Why are you ditching it? Uh, actually, uh, <laughs> memory management unit is not a real time, con not real time cap capable because uh, we don't, deterministic at least. Uh, so we are not able to, to use that if we want uh, deterministic things. And uh, hardware guys from uh, space industry think it's, uh, uh, it's mandatory to get a memory protection unit instead of a memory management unit to get the de deterministic things. Okay, um, thanks. Okay. Thank you very much.